Welcome to the channel. I'm Mario with MR Unlimited, and let's dive in to another good video. So today we got a Fox Evol Shock out of a YFZR motocross and we're going to go over how to inspect and disassemble and get into some of the nitty gritty with it and uh, we're going to take it from there. Alright so we're over here um, where I rebuild the shocks and uh, got all the tools, we've got some things laid out today that you would use to disassemble the shock as far as removing this cap, it takes a special tool. Um, I made this tool on my plasma table, but Fox sells a tool very similar to this. Um, also they have a special tool to remove the compression adjuster from the body cap, so we're going to be getting into that. Schrader valve removal tool for inside once you remove the cap to discharge the nitrogen and then a strap wrench to remove this outer air sleeve. Before we do anything about removing any of the air in the um, evol chamber and main chamber or the nitrogen is the first thing is to look over the shock. A big issue with these Fox floats, although they're a great shock, is they have in any situation, whether it's motocross or cross country, they get rock dents in the air sleeve and or the reservoir. And what can happen there is it will drag on the seal head and damage and you'll lose air. And when we get inside of it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, another thing too is I'm gonna give you a quick explanation on the EVOL chamber and main chamber. Inside of the EVOL chamber, there's a floating piston that separates. There's two air chambers, essentially. The bottom one is the main chamber that sets ride height. The next part above in the EVOL chamber is for like body roll and making it progressive. So it would be like if you had a dual rate spring on a snowmobile or a four wheeler, the two springs essentially make it soft and then as they get you know, squeezed, they progressively ramp up. And that's the same thing here. So if you start off with 50 pounds in the main chamber and 75 pounds in the EVOL chamber, you know, that's going to make it, so to say, linear. And then the more air you put in here, say you ramp it up to 200 pounds, that makes it more progressive. That's going to help with body roll and or bottoming. Then you have rebound, so that controls the shock, how it comes back out. And then this is your compression. So this is high speed is the big 17 millimeter nut, low speed is the flathead. And that is shock speed, not vehicle speed. So the center screw is low speed, control body roll. Um, slower movements, rollers, and then high speed is braking bumps, acceleration bumps, anything where the shock is moving quick. And then jump landings and that kind of thing is a combination of the two. So now we're going to discharge the air in the main chamber. And then we're going to do the EVOL chamber. Another thing to touch on as well is anytime you're making any adjustments to these, especially you should be doing it first thing in the morning uh, before you race, is to vehicle front end off the ground, tires not on the ground, the suspension is fully extended. You're then going to bleed off the main chamber, this lower one, and you're going to check your eval chamber and you set it to whatever your setting is, we'll just call this 150 pounds. So this is empty, whether you take the Schrader valve out or discharge all the air, set your eval chamber to 
150 pounds and then put your uh, air back into the main chamber, we'll call it 50 pounds for all intents and purposes. If you do not do that, what happens is, is that floating piston I was talking about earlier, if this only has 30 pounds of air in it and you go to put 50 here, this will move up. And then when you set 150, it's only gonna be in here. Or if you discharge that, the floating piston moves to the bottom and now when you put 150, it fills that up. You need the air volume in order to make the progressive spring rate in this air system work correctly. If you do not, the whole ride is off and you'll be chasing your tail trying to figure out why the thing isn't working how it should. So that's just a little bit of a basic on that and it's something that needs to be done. They do explain it in the Fox uh, owner's manual of these shocks, but people don't, they get lost in all of it. There's a lot of settings here. Um, it's essentially this shock is like any other shock, but it doesn't have a spring. It has an air sleeve that holds air and the air is the spring. So it does save some weight. Air is tricky though in how it progresses, but you can control those things. Um, but the disadvantage to an air shock is what I was talking about with the rock dents. You can see that this has been beaten up by rocks and stuff. I don't know if it's dented yet. We're gonna find that out once I get into it. So now we're gonna get into discharging the nitrogen out of the reservoir side. Is even before you start working on any of this, make sure the shock is clean. Um, one is because then you can see and inspect it correctly. And two, you just don't want to get, I mean, you're going to be clean in the shock once it's disassembled anyway, but it just helps to have it clean so you can visually see things uh, a little bit better as you're taking it apart. Remove the circlip. Now I'm going to uh, pull this uh, reservoir cap off. The way I removed the circlip is with a shock shim. The thing that you want to be careful for too especially is you don't want to use anything sharp because you want to damage the inside of that area. This is just a um, valve stem tool from a car that I'm using to remove that. Next, we're gonna get on to removing the air sleeve. This step, you'll be needing a strap wrench. This one comes from Snap-on. There's many different makes. This is another piece of it too, when the shock body's clean, this will grab good. Now we're going to remove the seal head. This is a special Fox tool. Spanner style tool has two, um, two nubs sticking out of it to grab inside of that seal head. Now earlier I touched on that when this is, has any dents in it, it affects the seal head. So this is the seal head. And what I was referring to is if there's any dents, it will damage the aluminum and or wear out this rubber samurai seal and or the plastic wipers. As you can see here, 
without looking at this necessarily, I'm seeing some damage on those wear bands, which would indicate that there's something going on in there. We're going to find out shortly. Air sleeve just slides right off. Okay, so this needs to be cleaned, but one thing we're gonna do for an initial inspection is to look down inside of it. And a lot of times you'll be able to see if there's any dents in there. Another way of doing it is this is another tool. This I made but Fox sells. It's the tool to install. There's a bushing inside of there. There's two seals and a bushing. So I take this and I'll slide it down through the tube because if there's any dents in it, it'll get hung up. There's no dents there. Another issue that could have been with this is it got debris inside of there, rock, um, you know, just some dirt, and that could have been what damaged those wipers. So, air sleeve is good. There's an O ring at the bottom, two wipers that'll all get replaced. The bushing will not get replaced unless it's damaged, which I won't know until I get everything clean. But as far as this air sleeve, looks good. Next up, once you drain the fluid out of the shock itself, we're going to remove the internal floating piston. This is what separates the nitrogen and the oil. This tool also is a Fox tool to set your IFP and it helps because it grabs the two flats on there to remove it. Again, we want to drain any excess fluid out of it. Now we're going to inspect, make sure we don't see any damage inside of there. What I have seen in the past too is some guys complain about stiction or the shock sticking at certain parts of the travel. Two things can happen there. One is if there's a dent and it gets into the seal head and binds up or I've also seen where you get dirt and debris in here and it, there's supposed to be a little bit of grease and or fox fluid and it will dry itself out to the point of wears out this samurai seal and actually wears the coating off the inside, the Kashima coating and that will cause it to bind as well. So it has to be, you really have to be thorough in cleaning and inspecting every aspect of I mean every part but the air sleeve and the reservoir. Next we're gonna remove the eval chamber. I use some compressed air to push that the floating piston. a pair of needle nose to remove. This is the floating piston that I was explaining that separates the two ch air chambers. We're going to disassemble now the shock shaft portion so we can get to the seal head to remove seals. And this is the primary piston. This is the rebound stack. This is the compression stack. That is what controls the force in and out of the shock. This is also where you would, if you're gonna make any changes, uh, valving changes, that's one of the uh, areas that you would do it in.
Now you want to be careful here that you're taking it off as an assembly or however you're taking it off, you're, you're keeping it together so that you don't screw up any of the orientation of the shims. This is just one way that I do it. You can use a zip tie. I'm also looking at here that there's any damage, any discoloration. One thing I will be looking at too, once I get everything apart to clean and I lay it out, is I'm looking for any distortion in any of the shims right here where it goes on the arbor, which is this. If you had damage there and this shim isn't sitting perfectly flat on that piston, it's letting oil pass by unmetered, essentially. You want to have that shim nice and flat. And it could be anywhere in that shim stack could be a problem that will affect the way the shock is dampening. So you want to be highly critical of all of that. This particular shock has a shortening spacer in it. We're going to remove that. This is called a negative spring. So what the negative spring does is when the shock is extended, either by air force or by the weight of the A-arm wheel and such, it, it's allowed to compress, which will change, helps dampen the, you know, the extended motion. And uh, it helps when you have the air in the EVOL in the main chamber, it keeps from having the shock fully extended metal on metal. It keeps it into the travel some and allows it to move in both directions. Uh, close to the top of the travel though. So that's the, uh, how that works. You also want to make sure that these plastics aren't cracked, broke, and that they're staying into the spring. If they fall out of the spring, they can move around and get damaged and broke. These pieces can end up in the primary piston into the shims. Next is the seal head. So these are the wiper bands for the air sleeve. This is the Samurai air seal, O-ring. There's two seals with inside of the seal head that we're gonna be removing. And also there's a screw down inside of one of the holes that lets air out during assembly. removed is all going to be replaced. You have to be careful with this too. This has a particular orientation. So this, there's an open side and a closed side. The open side goes up. Next, we're going to remove the bottom out bumper. Now, in this case, you can see there's damage there. It deteriorated, you know, came apart for whatever reason. Um, that's also going to be replaced. O ring here, this will be replaced as well. Now, this is another thing to, that I caught here. So just showed you that the bottom out bumper started to come apart. Those pieces traveled into the eval chamber. There's one of the pieces right there. So that's just an aspect of what can happen. These shocks are regularly serviced, but when you extend the service interval, 
This is just one thing that can happen. You could have multiple things. So it's a good idea to service. If you're really racing a lot of, you know, different series through the year, you want to service the shocks more often, two to three times. If you're only doing a few races, probably once a season. There's also an O-ring down inside of this body cap that's going to be removed. Now we're going to take a look at the shock shaft. We're going to make sure that we don't see any pits, any marks, gouges, visual inspection to see if it's bent. I will take and put it in a set of V blocks and put a dial indicator and check that. You don't necessarily have to go that far. What I recommend though is find a flat surface. This is a granite surface plate. You can hold the shock shaft both ends and spin it and see if you have any daylight underneath of it. That'll give you an indication if you have a problem. Lastly, we're going to get, we're going to remove this compression adjuster. This also takes a special Fox tool. It's really a good idea to fully disassemble these shocks, really any shock for that matter, and inspect every aspect of it. When you try to cut corners, you're not doing yourself any favors. So you really want to make sure that there's no issues. So this is the, the looks of the internal, the high-low speed compression adjuster. The low speed portion, when you adjust that center screw, down inside of here is a tapered needle and that controls the bypass of how much fluid travels up the center of that stud and out the back side. The high speed portion tightens and loosens this spring, which also applies pressure on a set of shims, and that controls the high speed portion. Obviously stiffer, stiffens up the shock, open, softens the shock. Now we have the shock all disassembled. We're going to be ready to get it clean. We also want to just double check this body to make sure it doesn't have any damage. Now, this is a little tricky because this can have some damage on it, like some nicks and some bumps and some things like that. But this doesn't affect how the shock works or air. The air is in the upper portion of this. But you do not want anything, it can have some marks in it, you just don't want anything sharp. So you want to file any sharp, spots off so that when this thing travels up and down, it doesn't wreck the seals inside of that. You want to make sure that these mono ball are, are working correctly. Everything's moving, not rusted, no Teflon sticking out. That, if that's bad, that's going to cause a suspension bind. So now, I'm just going to take some time. We're going to finish finishing disassembling the air sleeve. And then we're going to wash everything up. I just showed you how to take apart a Fox float from a YFZR450. Now we're going to do the back shock. So now we're going to clamp the shock into the vise. Good thing to keep in mind is use some form of soft jaw or you know the actual inserts like this vise has. That way you don't damage the any part of the shock when you're clamping it in. First thing we're going to do is remove this rear spring. I do have kind of a fancy spring tool to remove this, but I'm going to show you another way of doing it that's much easier. 
so you don't have to go and spend all the money on that kind of tool. There is a set screw on this preload ring that needs to be loosened, but even before that, so we don't mess uh, where this spring is, I'm going to take a measurement from the bottom of the preload ring to that body cap. Alright, so we have two and three quarters. That's where that preload ring is set. All right, now that we have the spring off, next thing we're gonna do is let the nitrogen out of the reservoir. Push the cap down. Again, we're going to use the shim. It's easy to get out this way. I'm going to use our tool to remove the charge cap. Now, there's a couple ways of doing this. Fox actually sells a tool. It slides over the body, you put a snap ring into here, and then you tap on that to get this cap off. Um, you don't have to do that. I use a sharp chisel and just take your time and go easy, kind of all around the cap to pop it up. Now we're going to push the seal head down so we can remove the snap ring there. I'm going to use a rounded pick for this. Take a rubber mallet, slide the bottom out bumper down, tap up on the eyelet. I'm going to dump the oil now. You can record the depth of the IFP in the reservoir, or you can refer to a service manual. I know what the depth needs to be, so I'm just gonna go and remove it. Sometimes what can help also is to back off the low speed adjustment
You want to look at the condition of all the components, the shock body, preload ring, make sure no threads are damaged from, so the preload ring can move, all your swivel fittings. Another thing to keep in mind too, I've seen where this center bolt that goes through the hose gets loose. You want to make sure that's nice and tight. Also checking the mono ball to make sure that's working correctly, not rusted. Inspecting the hose for any issues in the outer sheath. Again, checking the fitting there. Checking the reservoir tube, make sure there's no dents in it. Visual inspect the inside. Now we're gonna remove the compression adjuster. Again, you want to inspect the O-ring, the O-ring on the piston of the compression adjuster itself, both of which will get replaced when we go to assemble. I'm just going to prop this here so it can drain, and we're going to move on to disassembling the shock shaft to get our primary piston off and our seal head. Now we're going to disassemble. This device at the end, normally they have a lock nut that holds the primary piston onto the shaft. This is a bottoming device that goes inside of a cup within the shock body. So it doesn't fully rely on when you get to the bottom of the travel to bottom into this foam bumper. It uses this as it gets down inside of the secondary tube, it slows the shock down. And then it lets it release on the rebound stroke. In order to get this off, you need a half inch Allen. Again, you want to keep this whole assembly together so that you don't lose any of the shims where they relate inside of each of the stack. This is the rebound side. This is the compression side. Now, another thing to touch on, on the compression side, some of these Fox Flow rear shocks have a bleed shim so you notice that there's slits within the shim. They do that instead of drilling a hole like they used to do in the primary piston. It distributes the oil flow evenly instead of trying to jam it through one of the bleed holes. Next is the seal head. Remove that. We're gonna remove the two seals inside of here. This one's the scraper. Next is the U cup seal. There is also a fiber backup washer that's in there. Remove this O ring on the outside. This is the dust cap.
and bottom out bumper. You also want to make sure that you put the rebound adjuster all the way in, all the way out. Make sure it works smooth. There's no issues there. And then you also want to check to make sure that this mono ball is good in the end of this. One indication I do is just like that to make sure it works. But I'm going to remove the spacers, the O-ring, and I'm going to inspect to make sure there's no rust, no issues into there and fix accordingly. So that concludes our video for today on disassembling the rear shock for the YFZR450. I hope you liked the video. Please hit the like and subscribe button. We really appreciate it. And if there's other content that you'd like to see as far as I know in the future here we're going to rebuild a single crankshaft for a TRX450 YFZR. We're also going to do more shocks, maybe get into some clutching, do some engine uh, disassembly and assembly. So please let me know what you'd like to see and thanks for watching.